Hello everyone, JT Viper here, separated from my PC and recording on my phone due to a faulty MSI motherboard that I received from Newegg on Friday. So this will be me while I wait for authorization to file my replacement. Now it's unfortunate, I won't be able to produce anything of serious quality for the next little bit, but I will try to publish something each week to keep you guys entertained. With all that said, Let's get into the subject of the controversy surrounding Super Bowl 51, shall we? As many of you will know, the Super Bowl ad roster was full of advertisements from a cornucopia of companies and voicing a variety of views, the most prominent of which were Lumber 84, Anheuser-Busch, and Audi. Lumber 84 came in hot with a video about illegal Mexican immigration, Anheuser-Busch took heat for their portrayal of their co-founder's story as a German immigrant in the 1800s, and Audi took a more traditionally progressive route by focusing on the oft-discussed and even more frequently debunked gender wage gap. Now honestly, as a marketing student, I was appalled by the poor sense being put on display by these companies. But why do I say poor sense? It's simple, really. When you make a polarizing statement... Regardless of which side you support, you run the risk of alienating a significant portion of the overall market in your industry, all for the sake of a little virtue signaling. Historically, this feels over reels type of business has been detrimental to the long-term success of businesses, and we need look no further than Twitter's consistently dropping stock value in the light of its ideologically motivated business moves to see the effects of putting virtue signaling before revenue generation. Now it is also no secret, at least to a lot of my viewers, that I'm enrolled in a business-related program, specifically business sales and marketing. Today was personal marketing, which focuses on the creation of a professional portfolio, but wherein the teacher often brings up prominent marketing campaigns to flesh out the course and teach the students about different viral marketing tactics. Today was no different, and after covering the Pepsi promo prank commercials with Jeff Gordon, MBA and WMBA stars in previous classes, and knowing that my professor had approached a number of polarizing political topics with a fairly progressive bias before, I was certain that today would involve the more politically charged examples of Super Bowl commercials in the start of class discussion period. Of course, my professor did not disappoint. She opened with the Lumber 84 commercial, which she used to transition into remarks about Donald Trump's statements regarding, quote, Mexican immigrants, which I corrected her as being about illegal Mexican immigrants, like the ones seemingly being glorified in the Lumber 84 commercial. After making some counterpoints about the employment needs of current American citizens, to her saying that it shouldn't matter what country you're from if you have a will to work, Again, that was her statement. It shouldn't matter what country you're from, what race you are, whatever, if you have a will to work. <clears throat> she quickly transitioned to Anheuser-Busch's throwback to the harsh realities of 1800s America, which she used in order to bring up the hotly debated seven-country travel ban as put in place by President Trump and similarly in the past by Barack Obama. I lost my cool after a significant amount of back and forth, mostly with my female classmates about the particulars of the order, of whom I don't believe a single one has actually read its wording, when my professor openly called it a Muslim ban. And, to my discredit, I interrupted her, refusing to let her continue imparting factually incorrect information to the class, as the ban does not or did not discriminate based on religion but rather by the nationality of the traveler. If you were coming from Yemen, Iraq, Iran, Somalia, Syria, and I'm missing two others there, you were not allowed entry, regardless of your religion, your ethnicity, your sexuality, any of it. Of course, unless you had dual citizenship. But as you know, I hate when people try to lie their way around the facts. So I interrupted her. I stopped lies from being put to the class. It's possible she was not lying and simply misinformed, but after I corrected her and she kept trying to state that it was a religious ban, I'm sorry, I provide proof, you refuse to accept it and keep spouting the incorrect information, 
it's now a lie. In any event, I got a dressing down about how we need to treat people from other nations seeking travel to or residence in another country, despite there being no American constitutional rights or freedoms extended to non-citizens of the U.S., before she cut the entire conversation short by curtly saying, quote, well, let's not get political, shall we? While being the one to bring a polarized political viewpoint into the classroom in the first place. Now, after a quick segue through a pair of Wix advertisements featuring Jason Statham and Gal Gadot, we came to the Audi wage gap commercial. And yes, words were had once again. I won't go over what all was said, as I simply brought up all the points which Audi has already been confronted with and which have already grown stale from the incessant refutation of the gender pay gap. But I will say this. You cannot call for an end to political discussion in the classroom in the middle of a heated debate and then decide to cap the discussion period with a commercial containing nothing but the wage gap virtue signaling of a company whose entire executive board is comprised of white middle-aged men. Yeah, not the best look for a company that claims to be so vehemently committed to focusing on the success and value of women in the workforce. Now, I have since sent an email to my professor apologizing for my interruption, as I feel that I was out of line with my conduct, but also noting my opposition to the classroom being needlessly polarized with political discussion, especially when inaccurate views are going to be shielded from criticism or correction through the use of administrative power, such as a professor saying, well, this discussion is over, and then putting their last few words in. Folks, if I had wanted to sit around and debate politics in school, I would have gone back for my political science education or ethics programs as opposed to business ones. I enrolled in my program to stick to the facts, work my ass off, and rack up the zeros on the tail end of my annual earnings. But I will not sit idly by as someone takes my tuition dollars and prioritizes political posturing over professionalism and the honing of our career-specific skills. Now, as I'm stuck working from my phone, I'm not really sure how to put my Patreon patron thank you credits at the end of my videos yet. In light of this, I would like to extend this simple verbal message of appreciation to my $5 patrons, Subconscious Devil and Memory Holiday, and my $1 patrons, Wild Tanuki and Hackjob. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Your support means the world to me. It reinforces my determination and validates the belief that what I'm doing is meaningful and has a tangible impact on the lives of others. Thank you.